right. Welcome back to our second interview with Erica this year. Uh, she is one of the helpers in my ABC uh, client group program. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to talk with you about any updates to your work recently, your experiences, your the lessons you're learning. Uh, but Erica, maybe I'll just have you uh, give you a chance to introduce yourself, how whatever you want to say today is, is just great. <laughs> Cool. Thanks, George. It's good to be here with you. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm Erica O'Kane, and my work in the world is to care for people. I just happen to do that by way of Apple products. Uh, I bring an approach that is there's something great that you know how to do in this world that I have no idea about. I just happen to know about the technology. And so I'm here to be a companion rather than a do it for you kind of person. I believe that people should be able to do what we just did when I'm gone, uh, unless it's a one-time thing. If it's a one-time thing, you know, you're not going to have to do this again. Don't waste your brain energy. Let me just take care of that. But for things that people are going to have to do over and over again, I want to make sure that they can do that independently. Mm. That's great. Yes. And it's it's unusual, right, for someone who is supporting others with tech to to say I care for people and that's sort of like my first goal. So that's that's a wonderful um, uniqueness about your work. All right, so before we started recording, uh, we were just talking about how you've been doing this practice. I'm gonna call it net caring. You can call it that if you want to, but uh, for those who, well, I'll let you describe what you're doing on a regular basis and mm -hmm. the kind of, synchronicities effects that it's having. So go ahead and share with those who are watching. Yeah. So I make it a point to reach out to three people each week, not even about business, just, Hey, you've been on my mind. I'm thinking about you. How are you doing? Sometimes when we connect, we end up talking business and sometimes we don't. What I've noticed that happens though, is when I am consistent in this particular practice, business comes out of some other location. You know, somebody that I haven't talked to for a while or a new client gets referred to me, all of these things, they just kind of materialize out of seemingly nowhere. But I feel like, but I notice when I don't keep up with the reaching out to three people, those sorts of things don't happen. So I find it fascinating to watch the energy move and flow and, uh, yeah, it is. See how it goes. It is yeah. so cool. Um, what a what a simple practice, and what a a profound noticing of um, you know, there 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 is something. It's so weird. Like I I often talk about how like I'm like un, unsure about law of attraction, um, mm -hmm. except that I have seen it happen again and again with regards to people, with regards to how we attract people into our lives and attract. Uh, you know, people reconnecting with us. Um, mm -hmm. So somehow, and, and the law of attraction, like you're you're activating it by actually doing the caring, and the universe responds back. And it's mm -hmm. so it's so interesting that, I mean, this is this is a great example because, <clears throat> you know, like when I talk about net caring, I'm like, it's different from networking. Like if you were networking, you'd be like, yeah, George, my networking isn't working because uh, I talked to you know Sally, and Sally didn't hire me again after that conversation. So it's not working. Mm. Right. And that's yeah. how most of us approach it. Like, like what, what do you, what, what have been your thoughts? I mean, have you, have you tried networking before and how, how's that gone? It's excruciating for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Cause well, because it doesn't feel like I'm caring for the person. I'm just trying to talk to them to get something out of them. And it's like, that's, that's so out of resonance for me. And so when I'm more in resonance with who I am, which is my job is to care for people, then things just materialize. Yeah, it's um, now the fact that you do it consistently is uh, is an important sort of element to this. Um, you know, I say, like, if you if you want a consistent income it probably helps to have consistent action. <laughs> you know, like you're like, like hmm, maybe there's yeah. a connection there. And the, the, and the fact that you found this action that is doable for you is really awesome because um, it's simple. 
it's connected to your energy flow. Um, it's connected mm -hmm. to your, like your heart, you know, your, your sense of yeah. like, like it's good for your heart and it's good for the other and right. it's good for the energetic universal flow. So um, mm -hmm. tell us, okay. So I tell us about how do you figure out which three people to reach out to? Like, let's say you're doing it this week. Like, how do you decide? Um, honestly, it's kind of, isn't it? It's who kind of pops up into my mind mm -hmm. um, and who feels like, you know, I really would like to reach out to that person. There's somebody that uh, I reached out to this week because we had been kind of going back and forth in memes on Facebook and basically saying, why don't you just tag me next time? And so I'm like, you know, we think kind of should have tagged each other. So would you like to get to know each other better? Yes, absolutely. I've been meaning to reach out to you too. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now I know you're, you're, you've also implemented the uh, Todoist CRM uh, mm -hmm. type of system. Uh, for those who don't know, um, I made a YouTube video about it. You can find it. Just go to my YouTube channel and search, or you can search on YouTube Todoist CRM. And uh, the, the the video inside that video, I actually used Erica as, as an example. <laughs> so you can see. Um, so uh, and I'm going to be updating our, our notes right right now and in, in my to do with CRM. <laughs> so does that come into play? And, you know, it, it's not that someone pops up, you have to reach out to them. But does that somehow remind you and come into play there for for choosing who you reach out to? If I had fully implemented the Todoist CRM yet, it probably would come into play more. <laughs> yes. uh, it, that's one of those things that I'm still yeah. trying to get good about staying with. Yes, yes. Uh, and you know, every person that I you know get in touch with, put them in there, and every time I have contact, make a couple of notes. Um, yeah, that's on the and, project list right now. <laughs> right, and it doesn't have to be every time you make contact, right? It could, it yeah. could just be like every conversation you had that yeah. was more than a minute <laughs> or more than three <laughs> minutes or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like every call that I have with a client, I'm de definitely updating my notes there, um, and and a colleague or, uh, yeah. So, but but if I like commented, like one of my students asked a question, I made a comment. Of course, I don't update the. I don't do the CRM, but sure. Um, okay, so tell me, tell us more about, like, do you tell us more about the outreach itself or the 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 contacting them? Like, like I want to know more about. Do you prepare yourself in some way? Like, do you, um, like look at their profiles or something, or 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 tell tell me more about the process of of the the practicalities of it? Yeah. Very often, it's as simple as, hey, you've been on my mind. How are you doing? Um, or I saw this thing that reminded me of you. How are you doing? How's it going? You know, every now and again, it's, you know, well, in my uh, scheduling software, I have a follow-up that goes out three days after the last appointment. And it says, hey, is there anything that, you know, any loose ends that need to be tied up or are there you know anything are, that are you happy with everything and by the way this is an automated email from my scheduler so don't feel compelled to respond if you don't want to there's no pressure it's simply an opportunity to respond if you want that's a nice way of putting it yeah and mm -hmm. um so the fact that you say how's it going how you've been up to i mean that could sound pretty generic, I guess, to somebody like, do you, do you feel like, well, first of all, how is your response rate? Maybe we should ask, ask that. Um, I generally get a response. Oh, thanks for thinking of me. You know, and it's, you know, if there's something that's more specific to that person, or if there's some particular reason that prompted me to reach out, then of course I mentioned that and say, you know, oh, hey, I saw, you know, this platypus the other day and I know you like platypuses. <laughs> it made me think of you. That's sweet. That's So sweet. I thought that, I'd let you know I've been thinking of you. It's, and I guess what I'm trying, trying to get at is even though the message you sent sounds kind of generic, I feel like the energy behind it is not. Like yes. there is a, there is a palpable energetic difference between someone who, we feel is kind of robotically using a templated 
outreach message versus the kind of thing you're doing, even though the words might be the same. And, and I find that really interesting because I, I know what you mean. And I, I, I do think there is uh, some kind of, I don't know what it's opportunity, um, the right timing, uh, some energetic connection that creates that right timing or that mm -hmm. feel of the message being different. Um, and, you know, you exercised care. I mean, you know, even in that moment. Right. So um, yeah. that's, that's, that's wonderful. Um, well, and people already know me by this point, and they know how I care for my people. And so even just that little ping of, hey, how you doing, is they understand the care that's behind that because they already know how I'm going to care for them. That's So essentially, are, you're reaching out with, not just to past clients or only past clients. Tell, tell us more about like the categories of people you're reaching out to. Past clients, um, people I know, Facebook friends, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Regular, you know, friends in real life. Mm. Yeah, just it's it's really for me. It's oh, you come, you popped into my mind. There must be a reason for that. So I just want to let you know that you've been on my mind because so often it's easy to say to think that nobody's thinking about you and that nobody really cares. And yet, you know, I have friends who will be like, hey, how are you doing? Because, you know, maybe they know that something's been going on and they just check in a few days later. Yeah. But yeah. it's because they're thinking about me mm -hmm. that they check in like that. Yes. Yes. And we have more people to check in with than we usually you know, realize. I mm -hmm. mean, if we don't make a list or go and actually look at our Facebook friends, um, like, wow, there's there's a lot of people that I haven't been in touch with for, for quite some time. Um, yeah. So thank you for, for sharing that. Okay. Um, question for you, like if you, so, so it sounds like you're doing a, a better job than most people of keeping in touch with your warm audience. I'm wondering what are your thoughts about expanding that audience? So you get new people who don't know you reaching out to you, like what's your current thought on that? Or what are you working on in, in terms of that? That is definitely a work in progress yep. <laughs> that I haven't given it a ton of thought to. It, it's one of those, I want to get really good in the rhythm because yes, this reaching out to three people a week practice is great. And unless I'm accountable to another person, I don't stay on track with it very often. And I just set up uh, an accountability partnership with somebody. We had our first meeting yesterday and it was, you know, each day, you know, each week, we're going to do like kind of a, I guess, a planning call on Monday. And then each day, we text each other with, okay, what did you get done today? And so we celebrate everything that we got done. And, and if something's on the list of, you know, to do for too long, you can say, I noticed this has been on the list for a little while. Is this still something that is of value to you? Do you still want to do it? Or is it no longer important? That's so awesome that you you're you're creating that um, kind of accountability. Too too few of us have that, and thank you for kind of yeah, and for sharing that with us. Hopefully, others watching this will will feel inspired to reach out. Um, so, okay, one more question about the whole net caring thing is: mm -hmm. um, Do you do you have a sense like do do you because three people a week means you could possibly reach out to something like 120 and 150 people a year right mm -hmm. and i don't know if there's 120 150 on your list of people to reach out to but i guess what i'm trying to say is like do you do you remember oh wait i already reached out to george or or like how do you like like some people might get contacted multiple times a year or how how do you have a sense of keeping track? Of course, you're working on the CRM thing, or you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna check that out. But <laughs> but for now, like, how do you manage that? For now, it's a purely intuitive process. Okay, so you you kind of have a sense that okay, I haven't reached out to that person in a while. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So and it's a a spark of they've come into my mind for some reason. Yes. Or you know, I've I've seen some something on Facebook for from them or. You know, something in the world reminded me of them. 
Right. Yeah. I figure yeah. there's some reason for that. Yeah, you're following and... the spirit's call for yeah. for connection. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Thank you. Um one more quick topic before we we start wrapping it up is um we also talked before we started recording about uh this this idea of honoring our capacities, uh, our own capacity to do things. So tell us about that and particularly if you want to relate it to your own experience or or you could just talk generally about it. Yeah. You know, not every day or not every week do I have the same bandwidth to be able to do X number of things or X number of tasks. Uh, and not every task takes the same amount of energy to do. And so it's a matter of, okay, what kind of energy do I have today? How much do I have to give? And where is the most important place to put that energy so that I can get when I'm putting that energy in, I can get the most return of that energy and not putting it in to get the return, but right. putting it in Thoughtfully. and it generates that. Yeah. You know? It's, yeah. it's a, it's a wise investment of your energy mm -hmm. to create the greatest positive impact uh, yeah. in the world. Right, which of course includes your own life and your own business. Mm -hmm. yeah. Much more eloquently said than I could. <laughs> no, it's really, I'm glad you said it. I mean, you know, honoring our own capacity, which, mm -hmm. it, which does change day to day. And particularly for those who have part, you know, dealing with health challenges. Um, sometimes it's chronic illness. Um, it's, it might be difficult to plan to say, well, tomorrow I was going to do, Tomorrow I'm going to do these, you know, twelve things, and then tomorrow rolls around, and then there's a different health um, situation that day. Yeah. Um, and how I have do energy you... for four of those today. Yeah. So, so tell, what tell us are more the about things? that. Like, like what what do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah, it's what are the things that I have the energy to do today? If I have the energy to do one big thing, then I can do that one big thing. Or if I have the, the energy to do, you know, if, if I've got 12 tasks and three of them are big and nine of them are small or three of them are medium and then three of them are, are small. That's only nine. But anyway. The <laughs> math works out however you want it to work out. <laughs> it does, yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, maybe I have the energy for all three small tasks and a medium task. Yeah, yeah. Now, and so which one of those stands out and says hey, this one really needs to get done. Right. And right. how do I make a practice of prioritizing those tasks? You know, um, and I think the accountability helps prioritize those tasks because right. it helps. I'm an external processor. Half yeah. the time, I don't know what's going on in here until it comes out of here. Uh, and so when I talk with somebody, hey, I'm going to do this task and this task and this task. Great. Um, and I only have energy for two of those one day. Okay, well, which ones are most important or which ones just need to get done sooner rather than later? How do you um, deal with the always present, uh, I guess, um, resistance uh, or the anxiety or fear towards certain mm -hmm. tasks? Um, because how do you, how do it's, and I'm sure there's no perfect answer for everybody. And we, we each have our own way of, of going about it, but essentially this mm -hmm. very delicate difference between, uh, a real limitation that we need to honor and respect versus an excuse perhaps, or, um, a imposed limitation that we can lift. <laughs> shall i yeah. say how do you how do you yeah. think about that for yourself um that goes back to external accountability for me because i'm one of those people that if i'm left to my own devices i will never get anything done but if i have somebody that i can say okay i'm gonna get this and this and this done i'm like oh and now that I know that we're going to celebrate things when we get stuff done, I'm like, ooh, what can I do 
so that I can celebrate these things. I actually get excited about doing tasks versus, geez, I don't want to do that. But it's, hey, what can I say I did at the end of the day? Yes. I love that you've created, you know yourself well enough. So therefore you created a system that works with you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's really great because, uh, yeah, my, my, this is why I'm on focus mate, like hours and hours a day. Yeah. For those of you <laughs> who've heard me talk about it, it's like, I I'm religious about focus mate because, uh, I need it. Uh, otherwise, just like you said, um, if it was up to me, I would be playing video games and, you know, having, having popcorn and watching Netflix, whatever, I'm not, not here <laughs> doing this. And yet yeah. when I do show up, um, again, designing a system that works for me, each of us has to find the way Erica, the accountability buddy thing is brilliant, right? Like, mm -hmm. like when we, when we show up for the system we've designed, um, you probably feel proud. Mm -hmm. at the you know like you said celebrating like i feel proud that i showed up for my focus mate session even though i didn't really feel like it but i'm like hello buddy i could tell my buddy like yeah i'm mm -hmm. a little bit tired right now um don't really feel like doing this but this is something i'm going to do and and one more thing of course you know i'm sure you'd probably do this too like breaking it down into smaller pieces mm -hmm. That so that it's not it's like any project, most projects feel intimidating, can feel intimidating to us. It's like, no, 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 it's a breaking down. Ah, oh, this thing I can do. <laughs> this mm -hmm. this piece I can start with. And then this piece yeah. I can probably get right. Mm -hmm. Like how do you how do you handle that? Well, it's it's starting with that littlest piece and then saying, Okay, I'm gonna do just this little piece. Well, and then I get doing that littlest piece and it's well, I can move on to this next piece. And the and then I just get going in the role. Yeah, <laughs> and exactly. so it's it's easier to get going in a role if I can just start one little thing. Yes, yes, absolutely. And there's always, uh, oh. no matter how intimidating a project is, there's always a small piece we can get started with. Mm -hmm. You know, so, all right, well, I'd, you know, I could, I could talk with you for a long time about any all of the stuff and more, but um, share with us what your current offer is. What are you? How do you serve your clients? And yeah, how can people get in touch? Yeah, so I serve my clients on an as-needed hourly basis, and so they get in touch with me and say, "Hey, I have Apple products. Now what?" And Fuji Apple, do... Gala Apple. <laughs> Apple computer. <laughs> well, <laughs> so what, what kinds of, what kinds of devices do you, yeah, t tell us more. Yeah. iPhone, iPad, Mac, Apple TV, Apple watch, you know, all the different Apple um, incorporated products because they're not Apple computer anymore. They used to be when I worked in the stores, but they're not anymore. Now it's just Apple um, Inc. Mm -hmm, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I do, you know, just as needed because Sometimes you just need that little kind of lift up to, to get you moving on that next project. And, you know, I do internet-based stuff as well, just because, you know, I'm a tech nerd with a computer science degree. I know these things. I know, I know the underpinnings of them and how they work, and I can explain them in ways that make sense to regular people <laughs> and not, you know, computer engineers. <laughs> and if people would prefer... Uh a so-called tech nerd who has a heart of gold and actually brings that kind of spirit and caring into the, into the client work and the conversation. Well, Eric is your person. So um, tell us about your, how, how to best uh, people best reach you. Well, my website is soulful support.com. S O U L F U L support.com. And then my email is just info at soulful support.com. Awesome. I'll have the information below as well. Thank you so cool. much, Erica, for what you do, how you do it, and just, um, yeah, being an example of, of doing these things that can inspire us as well. Thank you so much, George. It's always good to talk to you. Thank you.